What's up, saucers? We are back. Uh, unfortunately, not under yeah. <laughs> the best of circumstances, but we have the best uh, guest to talk about things like this. What we're talking about is Roe v. Wade at stake. Um, <laughs> what else is new? Um, but we have the amazing policy consultant and activist, Bailey Boyd, back on the pod yeah. to make sense of this for us, to talk about what lies ahead um everything that truly is at stake what trigger bans are like things that are like really technical that like you might not have known mm -hmm. that could happen in all these states once the supreme court um the lovely supreme court overturns roe v wade um i think Good july times. will be no well no more things in in july but um <sighs> stay tuned for that we'll be reporting on that too i'm sure but anyway without further ado this is bailey Ah, oh, thank you so much, Bailey, for coming thank back you. on. Thank you so much. I would like for everyone to note, if you're watching YouTube, Bailey's mug right now is yeah. Diana and Charles in painted on a ceramic mug. <laughs> we yeah. love, like I said, couple goals. I mean, there's no one else that I would want my marriage to repl replicate than theirs. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> um, okay, but let's get into it because... Um, I don't know if you guys knew this, but in a breach of Supreme Court confidentiality, Politico obtained a draft of a majority opinion written by Justice Alito that would strike down Roe v. Wade. Yay! The draft was circulated in early February, according to Politico, and the opinion in this case is not expected to be published until late June, not July. I keep saying July. In uh, late June. So, I yeah. mean really great stuff we feel really gr great and like safe as uh women and people with uteruses but um i guess i'll start off by asking like how the fuck did we get here to this point and like i know it's like a lot of you know it's a domino effect essentially but like how slowly has the needle been moving to get us to this point like in your profesh opinion. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Well, thank you guys for having me back. I'm kind of sad that it's this soon because we were like, oh, <laughs> I know we're going to meet in June and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. then like this happened. Also, if anyone hears screaming, I apologize. Um, <laughs> my cat doesn't like it when I talk to people. <laughs> so I guess how we start to get into this. So first of all, what I'll say is that we, I feel like we really covered kind of how yeah we, we got a little bit into how this happened and what could happen mm. if and when um right. roe v wade was overturned in the last time that we did this podcast so i would say to anyone who wants to get deeper into Nitty the on that go back and listen to that episode also i'd oh, just yeah. like to point out that you know anytime we're talking about politics um just know that this is we're talking about what's happening as of today mm -hmm. right change given at any point so yes, this is um, may 28th very, <laughs> that we're yeah it's this. very possible that things could change tomorrow or just mm -hmm. by the time you listen to this things might be a little bit different um but probably they'll be in the same vein at least until the you know actual decision comes out in june mm -hmm. yeah. so your first question, how did this happen? <laughs> oh, well, okay. Let's go I mean, back as to I the... the last episode, I would say <laughs> the that the birth of our nation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the right and um, specifically the anti choice movement is very well organized and they have been chipping away at this for years. A big part of why I think this happened is 2016, people didn't vote. That is a huge issue that we have. Mm -hmm. And if we can take anything yeah. out of this, because I know people, you know, and I'm I'm never trying to get frustrated with people because <laughs> I understand that it wasn't on a lot of people's radar and whatnot. But my friend and I, who both were activists um, back in, you know, 2016 and working at NARAL and whatnot, we've had a lot of people approach us and be like, well, what can I do? And it's it's been very hard because I just want to be like, well, nothing. You missed it. Yeah. You were yeah. supposed to do something back then, but that is very cynical and not true. And mm -hmm. sorry to anyone that I've said that to, but it, it is frustrating it's because frustrating. the thing is, this could have been avoided. Yeah. Um, and it's, but it's also a very important reminder of why you have to vote mm -hmm. and why it's still important. Because the thing is, these anti choice um, people and legislators, 
and specifically the ones who have really pushed for this for a long time, you know, their next step is they're going to try to get this to be federal law. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so it is still very, very important that you, that we make sure we have, um, you know, people who are pro-choice in Congress, mm-hmm. um, because we don't, we don't want that to happen. We've already, yeah. you know, they're sending it back to the states right now. Um, you need 60 votes right now to overcome the filibuster and a Republican president in order to get, you know, probably abortion um, in into federal law. And I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. That's difficult. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it's still a possibility and it's still mm-hmm. something that they are going toward. Yeah. So we can't just stop right now and be like, oh, my God well, now everything's ruined. Like, no, they're still, they're going to keep going forward and we got to, you know, Mm -hmm. keep being on the defense, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. because that's just where we're at. And I kind of, well, I do want to get into filibuster. Obviously it's really dated and it's fucking a lot of shit up, but I also kind of want your opinion on the possibly dangerously rose colored glasses view But it's an interesting point of because I've heard, you know, people being like, well, it's not going to be fully overturned because for decades that has been the platform that conservatives run on. So politicians Mm. need they need that issue to still be an issue because a lot of conservatives will vote based purely on pro-life, pro-choice. And if that is no longer if it's overturned and that's no longer an issue, a lot of that voting base could possibly go to the uh, to, you know, the other side, mm-hmm. because that's the main issue they're voting on. So I've heard that, you know, that could just be like, a. I just want a professional opinion on that because obviously no one can know for sure, but that, it, that really has been the, the foundation of the right, like Little all boogeyman. Yeah. Like of, all politicians yeah. for, for decades. It's like, we're fighting for this. If you vote for me, I'm again, I'm pro, I'm this. pro-life, I'm pro-life, I'm pro-life. Yeah. But if that's all gone, there are people who vote just on that. And then if they are like, okay, well, I don't have to worry about pro-life, then maybe I do think more like these left leftist politicians, you know, <laughs> like, what do you think? Mm-hmm. I think that it has to do a lot with the misinformation that is perpetuated because, you know, we know that it's a really high number of people who actually support um, abortion in the United States. Yeah. So it's, and specifically, you know, like conservative white women they actually do tend to support abortion access. But if you've got a politician on stage telling you that, you know, like that the right, that the right or not the right, I'm sorry, that the left is basically, you know, women are birthing babies and then they're stabbing them afterwards. Like they're having like abortions after the baby is born. And, you know, when you have people talking in that way it's really scary and yeah. that is when i think people start to walk it backwards and mm-hmm. start to vote incorrectly but yeah. it's like i think it's like and i don't want to mess up this number because i've seen a couple different ones but i'm pretty sure it's like 61 percent of adults say that abortion should be legal mm-hmm. but there yeah. is also kind of like a high percentage of that that does not think it should be legal in all cases, which is a whole nother issue, right? Because Mm -hmm. I obviously don't fall into that camp. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's still a high number of people who are saying that they think that abortion should be legal and not have an all out ban, even if they are conservative and specifically white women. Um, Mm. That's kind of frustrating because, you know, a lot of those people might justify this by saying, well, you know, like if we, maybe if some companies pay for travel or if they do this, then it'll be fine. Or or like if their insurance covers that, then it'll be fine. But they're still thinking about people within their tax bracket. They're really not thinking about the people who are very poor, who, um, you know, tend to be more affected by this. That's what I was going to say. And like, yeah, specifically, obviously, black women, women of color in general. But it's yeah. just like there's so much there's so much inequity that it just there isn't really an answer because, you know, it's the same with like any kind of really restrictive measure, whether it's like banning all guns or banning abortions. There's not going. It's the way that it's going to be enforced that really shows 
you know, the classism, the sexism, the racism, because the laws themselves are, there's a, they're always worded just vaguely enough that like there can be, there's always the rich, the rich people, the white people, the military, that whoever, the there's going to be access to these things. It's just a matter of who has it. Yeah. And well, and we think about, you know, I mean, there's so many scary things about this that we could talk about, but going down the rabbit hole of travel even is really interesting because first of all, it's like who has access to that? And also mm -hmm. that's going to be vastly different as we see these bans go into effect because, you know, a lot of the states that are going to ban abortion are very close to each other, which means that you're going to be, you're going to have to travel across multiple states. Mm -hmm. And even if let's say you work at Amazon and Amazon says that they're going to pay for your travel, what if you have other kids? Because we also know mm -hmm. that the majority of women who are getting abortions, usually this is not their first child. Um, mm. What are you going to do with your kids in that instance? What if you work shift work and you need access to abortion and shift work for anybody that doesn't know is like when you work at a restaurant, you know, you don't know what your schedule is. It's hard to get days off. Mm -hmm. um, how are you going to obtain one? It's just, you know, we already saw this with waiting periods, but I don't, I really don't subscribe to the idea that helping women travel is going to fix everything. Yeah. Um, it also is going to cause problems in states where you know, where people have to travel. If we look at New mm -hmm. York, they've already seen an uptick in the number of women who are using their abortion funds. So it used to be that they would see, I can't remember what year it was, but um, they would get like, like they would have like 20 abortions per month that they would help fund. And now it's like 125. Mm. Wow. So that also means when scheduling appointments, it yeah. might be that they don't have an appointment for you mm -hmm. when you need it. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's all very bad. I also yeah. remember, you know, I was on a, I was on a healthcare policy call and someone was asking about um, funding for abortion and what we were going to do at the federal level. And one of someone that I know that I won't say their name, they started talking about, well, we'll get federal funding to pay for it. And I would just like to highlight that that is not possible because of the Hyde Amendment. We cannot use federal funding to pay for abortion. Mm -hmm. um, that also still seems to be something that some conservatives think is a thing. Um, and it's not. We uh, it's, cannot use federal yeah. funding to pay for abortions right now. Um, so having some sort of, you know, travel fund or right, right. anything like that, you that's not happening until we overturn Hyde. I mean, there's so many things that I hear from these politicians or, you know, it, that are they're, they're just so obtuse. They're so stupid. And what they think we, you know, it, it's the assuming that a, a federal funds go towards abortions. It's assuming like what they know happens to a, a, a person with a uterus in general when they are pregnant. It's like so funny. Like they I don't know if you saw the clip of one that did not know what an ectopic pregnancy was. Mm -hmm. And they're just so stupid. Um, like they literally like the the baby is not viable mm -hmm. in an ectopic, ectopic pregnancy. And they're like, oh, no, you still can't have an abortion if you have an ectopic pregnancy. Like they, they're going to force the person to carry to term mm -hmm. um, and possibly die. Um, but when you were talking about like what will happen with politicians, because this is what they dangle around, like right. this is their talking point. Like mm -hmm. I had this kind of theory. I don't know how you think about it is like, there's been a lot of like an exodus, like especially from L.A., New York, from people moving to like Texas, to Florida, to a lot of these like middle states, southern states, because it's cheaper to live, less tax or whatever. There's a lot of there's been an exodus. And in my head, I'm like, well, this is a good thing because now we have like more like leftist voters in these states. Mm -hmm. But now I'm thinking because of this, because it's going to go to the states or eventually it might go to the states. Uh, will these people now move out of these states? It's like, I, I think like maybe this is their big plan is to move like all of the left leaning people out of their states because abortion access is no longer, you know, and now we have gun reform. That's not going to happen in these states either. Um, and now they'll have their nice, cozy red base still in their state. 
who will continue to vote red and our electoral electoral college will never change and will never ever get anything done because they'll continue to have a yeah. red voter base, conservative voter base in their states and not have the influx of leftists yeah. anymore. I don't know. Do you think it's kind of like I mean, long -term? that is a theory that could <laughs> definitely happen. Um, you know, <laughs> my theory that is equally as cynical, <laughs> so it's like yeah. not much better, is that <laughs> People don't think about things until they affect them personally. That's so true. Yes. I feel like people don't realize what restrictions they will have on abortions until they need to access one personally yep. and then mm -hmm. run into the problem. Um, I mean, but that's part of the whole issue, right? Like I think about, I, I'm not going to say her name, but my friend's sister-in-law makes me so angry. So when this happened, when this came down the pike, I, I was really angry, not surprised, but you know, it's like when, when somebody punches you in the face, it doesn't matter if you're expecting it, it mm -hmm. still hurts. Yeah. So <laughs> even though I was fully expecting yep. this to happen, it yeah. still sucked. Um, and I was mad and I felt like a lot of my anger was going toward this one person in particular, which is not fair, but um, I didn't say Whatever. anything to her. But this woman is in Idaho and she's related to one of my friends. And, you know, on social media, she's supporting all the like, yay, oh my God, finally, we're not going to be killing babies, all the things. And I'm like, bitch, you had an abortion. And wow. under these trigger laws in Idaho, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't have been able to access that. But this mm. woman, is so dense that she does not call her abortion an abortion, okay? So she found out no. that her, that the fetus was likely to have Down syndrome. <gasps> so she terminated wow. the pregnancy, is what she calls it, but she says that's not an abortion. She Wait, she literally says that that's not an abortion? She has- yes. And then she was like celebrating the end of Roe v. Wade. And I was just like, oh Please my tell God. And she's Christian, I'm assuming. Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. What? Yeah. What? I know. And Bailey. God's children, God's yeah. baby, like all, we we're all God's uh, also, creation. Also, like also, what also, is. <laughs> you terminated the pregnancy, not because the baby um, was going to. Die. die but because I know. you didn't want to which i have a perfectly healthy child and, that has down syndrome and, yes. have a and long also life also <laughs> even if you don't like a lot of parents that's what happened that's why abortion is important because a lot of parents they're not equipped to have a full like to care for a a child like through adulthood okay these are decisions that no, we are I supposed mean, to yeah. be able to make because and i have a best friend that went through not not a uh, down syndrome for the baby but like a similar situation how to make this tough decision and people assume i mean i know i'm preaching to the choir it's like you obviously but people assume that having an abortion means that you don't want kids and that's not the no. case with everybody and oftentimes it's the worst day of their life and the hardest decision they've ever made mm -hmm. and they still want it's like how are how are human beings like this fucking Dense. ignorant yeah. yeah i cannot so believe that, that woman like that how insane? great she had a choice I cannot believe How her. Good for you that but you had a choice. The fact that she was online and like praising. No. You know, praising the fact that this I would have commented I like, that, Why Bailey. I literally. So yeah. I like couldn't handle Dude. it. I was just like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And wow. That is why. I got, you know, that was the moment that I was like, I'm so pissed. I got to log offline because. Oh shit! No, I would. Kudos to you for yeah. not literally commenting and putting her on blast for being a fucking hypocrite. No, and, because and, and she part does of the not, problem. She literally doesn't call it an abortion. It's so crazy. But, but anyway, the <laughs> other thing that's that it. I, I, oh, so well, that's and, what we need to do is just not call them abortions. Okay, we'll call them shmush abortions. <laughs> no, well, no, insane? we just call them terminating the pregnancy. Oh, right, right. It's so Shmer insane. Shmerminating. But it also Shmerminating. reminds me that there is a stigma about who it is who gets abortions. Uh -huh, and of course. there was a study that of course I have to find the, um, you know, mm -hmm. citation for, but only about 3% of people who obtain abortions 
are minors under the age of 18. And mm -hmm. I feel like everyone needs to know that because yeah. everyone has it in their head that it's these it like irresponsible teenagers. And you know yeah. what? Sometimes it is, and they absolutely need access to abortions. I'm that's an that three percent very very important. Yeah, but. It's 3%. That means 97% of the people obtaining abortions are older. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adults. Like, and do you guys have this experience like with, um, as women, like there are a, a number of girlfriends. Well, I know a lot of women who have had one and it's not like, like I said, it's the hardest decision, the, you know, worst day of their lives, you know, you, even though they made the decision. So it's like, you don't need to be harassed outside fucking Planned Parenthood when you're already like agonizing. But I want it for, for you guys. It's, it's just still not something that like women, even with, with one another, even if you know, you share the same political views and all that still don't talk about, because I have known some women for years and then found out that like earlier in their life, they had one because mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah. like kept, I don't know if that, have you guys had that experience with mm -hmm. like a lot of friends? And yeah, women in my life. I don't have that experience, but I think that that is a most that is mostly a normal experience. I think the reason that I don't is because I talk about abortion constantly and yeah. I work at NARAL. And yeah, so yeah, people yeah. usually are like, yeah. sometimes people open with it. They're like, I had an abortion. <laughs> I'm like, cool, cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I do feel like sometimes people are like, I want to talk to you about my abortion immediately. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, all right. I guess that's <laughs> you know what, what we're doing. I prefer that to small talk. Listen. Yeah, hundred percent. Let's get straight to the divorce, yeah. the abortions, the mental illness, the broken heart, the mental illness, yes, the childhood yeah. traumas. Let's get it. Yeah. If you guys ever want to talk about um, bridezillas, I literally <laughs> am obsessed with the bridezilla Reddit, and like I spend so much of my self care, if you will, just I reading. I'm Bride a part of stories. a. I'm a part of a Facebook group called um, "That's It." I'm wedding shaming. <laughs> mm. are you a part of that one too i think so but i get bogged down with all the disney princess um groups i'm in on facebook which <laughs> yeah 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 party guys, princesses I are nuts you guys but, <laughs> yeah oh my god that like bad weddings and like bridezillas yeah. it's literally yeah it's i my didn't favorite. even know peak I didn't even know that there were, well, I obviously I knew there were Facebook groups, but like they're active, exclusive too. You need to like prove that you, yeah, that you hate wedding part of it. Questions. You have to answer questions. <laughs> it's an exclusive group. I got in there because I talked about my wedding and another wedding. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've wow. been a bridesmaid like a hundred times. Okay. That's an exaggeration, but a lot of times, <laughs> yeah. um, it's like a 27 dresses situation. And I <laughs> yes. think it's because people are like, Oh, you like, you know, I think in their brain, they're like, oh, you've planned a lot of parties in your life because of like oh. my political work and whatnot. And so people are just like, oh, yeah, you're my best friend. And I'm like, yeah, oh. are you saw me to plan this whole thing. Um, yeah. 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 So anyway, that's off topic. But um, <laughs> hey, whatever. So anyway, we back have to, in to interject. So. Yeah. Yeah. Back to, you know, small talk, sadness. abortion, talk, women talking about abortion and being. Open oh, to yeah. It. it was just like, you know the level of, I mean, I, I honestly, everything stems from just this, like how our country was built and then the puritanical root of it all, because even certain topics being taboo, even amongst women, like I said, amongst women who already know political views of one another, like, uh, cause this has happened with friends of mine who know my viewpoint. It's not like, Oh, I'm keeping it from you. Mm -hmm. It's just like, not something that people really talk about. And then it's like, Oh yeah. Well, when I was 17 or when I was 25 I, I'm like what I had no mm -hmm. idea but it but it just shows you there's more there's so many people that experience this and yet mm -hmm. why so much secrecy like why uh, uh, now I mean now because it's like you you have so much backlash and hatred against you but why is our <laughs> why is our country set up like this like why is our society set up Reagan. where it's just yeah <laughs> Nixon literally um, Reagan <laughs> yeah just it's crazy to me well when you read that you know, when you read the leaked draft decision, um, it's really interesting because, of course, you know, he, of course, mentions that abortion is not a part of the Constitution. Then, well, <laughs> you know, at the very core of that, I'm like, well, the first thing is that women were not included in the Constitution at all. At so all. That's Great. a good point. 
Yeah. Um, not- also, um, cryptocurrency is not in the Constitution. The Internet's not in the Constitution. Data privilege is not in the Constitution. Yeah, and under gun Crypto. reform, it talks about a well-regulated <laughs> militia. Like, there are no well-regulated militias in need of AK-47. So it's like, or AK-15. It's like, sorry, none of it makes sense, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> well it's like it's like we talked about last time where yeah. it's like we you know like there's no right to privacy <laughs> included in the constitution and yet yeah we we expect that to be a part of it it's just kind mm-hmm. of assumed there's a lot of things that like we can't include every single right that you have in the constitution right. it would be so long yeah. um i mean it already is long but you know yeah. it would be longer Um, Mm -hmm. so that's kind of interesting. I mean, also interesting to note that per usual, you know, I've experienced this personally, um, the people who don't want the decision to, to have gotten out and don't want to deal with it. Um, you know, like Mitch McConnell and all the people, they are really, really focused on the leak. And I just like, I know, could not care. So right, right, right. Oh, relax. I don't care. Yeah, I. <laughs> I mean, I will say that the a leak of um, a Supreme Court document is unprecedented, and so yeah. it was newsworthy for that reason. But also, the most important thing in this story is not that. Yeah. The most important thing is overturning something that has been in law for a very well, long time, and also that is going to impact tons of women. Like, yeah. I, yeah, and men. I just get really, really upset by the fact yeah. that they're like, but the leak, we have to investigate the leak. Yeah, it's all and just well, smoke like, and mirrors. I don't care. Also, yeah, I mean, like theory, theory, um, it was leaked intentionally by the right just for that reason, so that we can focus on the leak and the lack of privacy. <laughs> just a little conspiracy well, that's theory. A theory. But, um, if what? it was spoke, if it was leaked by the, you know, there are arguments on both sides for who could have leaked it. Um, if it was the right, it's very possible that they leaked it because they wanted to hold all of the justices' feet to the fire on mm-hmm. the decision. Um, and then if it was the left, then obviously it's yeah, to warn because it would enrage yeah. everyone. And and yeah, a, a warning also is a good way to put it because. Um, you know, a lot of these abortion providers in states that have trigger laws and trigger bans that would go into effect, their abortion providers were kind of expecting to just find out in June and then just have to drop everything mm. and then just like go to another state, get another job, something like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas now they're like, I'm going to go in, I'm going to do as much work as I can up until June. Mm-hmm. Like... And yeah. I'm going to really, really focus on that, which is also scary, right? It's, yeah. Because these people are not just providing abortions. They're also providing, you know, oh, prenatal yeah. care. They're helping to birth babies. They're mm-hmm. they're prescribing birth control. They're doing all sorts of women's health. And all of that's going to be just like wiped out if all of these providers have to move to different states. And which... I don't know, I... I'm speculating here, but I'm like, what does that leave you with? Does that just right. leave you with like a bunch of weird Catholics? <laughs> well, and also, <laughs> also yes. I'm like, yeah. birth control, birth control. So <laughs> there's just so many, so many hypocrisies and irony in all of this. Cause it's like, you know, uh, uh, the super religious, like Christian side is birth control is wrong. Um, but abortion is also wrong. So, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. you can't even, you know, it's well, just odd. I mean, and that's sex ed, right? That's a whole mm-hmm. other conversation because then they're like, well, no, don't teach sex ed. And I'm like, well, are they learning it from you? Because you don't right. understand biology. And, yeah. you know, if we're not going to teach anyone about sex, we're not going to teach anyone about birth control, then like, how the hell do you expect them not to get pregnant? Because I'm sorry, mm-hmm. they're going to have sex. But that's the whole idea is that like, not in my Christian household. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's ridiculous. But also thinking about the decision, you know, they, so in that, in that leaked draft, it specifically, and, and I will say it's a draft. It could change. I don't really think that it will. And even if it did, it is, it's clear that 
Roe v. Wade is not going to come out of this unharmed, even if, you know, it's not completely overturned, like mm-hmm. it's not going to come out intact. Um, so, and, you know, also right now it, it kind of seems like that's just what's going to happen. Like mm-hmm. the draft that we saw, don't know that it's going to be much different. Um, the two things in that draft that really bothered me though, were first the, when he talks about the not knowing the economic impact, that's just entirely untrue. We have multiple studies stating the exact economic impact that this will have on people. And not even just the turnaway study that I talked to you guys about last time. And I still fully recommend that everybody go and buy this book about it now. The turnaway study, it is like amazing because it really lays out the case. Um, or, you know, the economic reason why this is not going to work, mm-hmm. um, including things like, you know, we've talked about before that people don't, I'm going to see if I wrote down the number. Nope, of course I didn't. But um, we talk about how people don't take care of like children or mothers, but right. they expect them to have these babies. Well, they looked at like, I think it was Mississippi and it was like a woman with like three to five kids or something. The most financial assistance that she could get from the state was like 200 and some dollars per month. Wow. And it's like, are you kidding me? And they have the like, nerve you... to complain about handouts that we give. It's right. like insanity. Yeah. So it, it, you know, how I don't really see those states that are putting the highest bans on people. Cause as we know, like Mississippi has the one abortion clinic. Like mm-hmm. I don't see them really stepping up to help women. No. Um, we've also got, you know, we've got like personal anecdotes. I remember my friend went to a crisis pregnancy center when she got pregnant in high school and this was in Olympia, Washington. So you'd think it'd be a little more liberal, but mm-hmm. she went and the reason she went is because she was like, they had lots of baby clothes and they had all this stuff that they would just give you. Mm -hmm. But when she came in, she had been kicked out by her mom and dad. And when she came in with her um, boyfriend, they told her that they would not be able to help her anymore until she, um, if she was going to live with him. (laughs) What? Yeah. And so she had to stop going there. So that even no she was keeping her baby and they yeah. still would what? not help her. That makes like, no sense at all. Great. It's, um, it's, insane. it's just a so lose lose. The economic impact is the first thing. And then the second thing is, you know, they talk in there about how they're like, oh, this is not going to affect other decisions of the Supreme Court. This is not <laughs> going to affect gay marriage. It's not going to. Oh, affect okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is how I feel. I'm like, I'm sorry, but that is not worth this piece of paper. Like, no. I don't believe you. No, I just no. don't. Because if you're sitting here and you're saying that precedent doesn't matter, what's to stop you from down yeah. the line? Oh, 100%. Changing other things. It just, exactly. I don't believe you. So, Great. Then Second Amendment is next. Fuck it. Well, and, and also, you know, they're like, oh, this doesn't change birth control and whatnot. But oh. Yes, it some does. Of these, some of these justices sided with Hobby Lobby and that decision, which basically said that Hobby, Hobby Lobby, Lobby could decide whether or yeah. not they considered birth control an abortion. Yeah. Wow. And, I mean, and you know, that's just birth control. That's not even like plan B, which a lot of people think is the abortion pill. Even right. some, okay, so I found as I've been going and like giving talks to people and, you know, mm-hmm. like um, doing these talk backs kind of forums uh i found that even some democrats and liberals don't know that plan b is not an abortion pill what like they fully supported it fully support it but they actually did not know that it was a different thing so they are not having enough sex (laughs) because i can't even count how many times i've truly all these people it's just sexual repression we are come on guys we are a country that is incredibly sexually repressed that's what it is because that's the only way that a whole society is built based on making all of this taboo yeah this is like so fucking depressed. Also, like, just uh, this always has bothered me. But the the um, just the name of the sides. So you have pro life. That indicates that the opposite side is pro death. And when actually 
like that just it's it's all set up in this direction anyway but pro choice the opposite of that is pro no choice which is accurate you're you're asking for like that you're fighting for there to be no choice for these women well you're also like talking to the people that like want babies to die in their elementary schools and don't give a fuck because they need their gun like they're not it, it's, no I'm, it's the it, the semantics of it it makes no sense the fact that they call themselves pro-life of course but i'm just like even if you want it like the, the names of the sides it's all set up it's all skewed yeah. like perception wise because it's not even opposites like we are we're to be to be pro-choice is not to be pro-death there's a lot of people people who are pro-choice who wouldn't personally want an abortion but they mm -hmm. believe that they should be able to make that decision for themselves and that women should yeah so that's why i have an even issue like politically to run on these platforms called pro-life when it's actually pro no choice mm -hmm. it's so i mean stupid. it's also interesting because if you think about it you know it really gives you some insight into how these people are viewing this procedure because if you identify with the term pro-life you truly believe that women are murdering babies yeah. like mm -hmm. and that is very very hard to contend with and so once again the yeah. misinformation that comes down around this is really frustrating i feel like there has been this picture painted of the kind of person that gets an abortion and it's not accurate. Mm -hmm. And it's also like, you know, if you, they've been using the terms trimester since like 73, right. With Roe. And mm -hmm. it's like at the beginning, if the pregnancy is not, if, if it's like very young pregnancy, if you will, then we're more likely to choose the women, but the woman but then as the pregnancy progresses then you're more likely to choose the baby and mm -hmm. it's it puts you in this position position of woman versus baby yeah. which i think is very unfair yeah um but we're having different conversations right yes. like one person is like i you're killing babies and then the other person is like this is about a woman and her right to her body you know, when Amy Coney Barrett was like, well, this is why we have safe haven laws. That was the dumbest shit I've ever heard. I'm sorry, but I'm like, do you, did you like, no. No. I mean, and I feel like it's a big deal for me to say that on here because I tend to, even though I'm obviously very, very pro-choice, I tend to not just like cost out the other side, but right. oh my God, I was like, that is not the issue. No. It is not the issue that you can drop a baby at a fire department. Like you were acting like babies right. just slide out of you. There's like uh, a whole nine you're months right, though. leading up to that. What it's are you so talking gross. about? It's two entirely different conversations. And that is why we cannot come to a consensus with this because we're not actually talking about the same thing. No. Because you, I have also heard pro, uh, <laughs> pro-life people who, so stupid <laughs> i know i'm like pro life i like life like oh uh, but actually i guess <laughs> yeah. i'm pro quality of life sorry yeah, not, exactly but also i'm just like i've heard pro-life people saying well agreeing with everything that pro-choice people say about the woman yes yes women should have yeah i know and like you know if, but it's because of what you just said there's an entirely different conversation happening where they think these women are murdering babies and they're going to that and they can agree with all the things about a women's rights or they say they do but like that's where the disconnect is. And you cannot repair that disconnect by continuing to talk at each other in different languages. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. People also don't realize that this could and will cause in a lot of places. Um, every time a woman has a miscarriage, mm -hmm. that w will open a criminal investigation. Wow. And it already has in Texas. That's yeah. So invasive in a time that is usually really, really hard for a lot of women. Yeah. Um, miscarriages are already very difficult and not well understood. We don't talk about them enough in society no, and the effect don't. of, how, you know, the effect of them on people's mental health specifically. Mm -hmm. And so on top of that, to have someone investigating you to see if you killed your baby and I quote, um, is going to be very awful. And people are not thinking about that. Like, no. you know, once again, my friend was trying to convince her mom, I mean, bless her because I don't even try anymore, but she was like, mom, this could happen and start saying that. And she said, one, I don't believe you is the first thing she said. 
to which my friend just like threw up her hands. And then she said, why do you even care? It's legal in Washington. And uh, I also think that that is disgusting because I'm like, do you not care about anyone else? Right, right. But, this Ayn okay, okay, Ra- Rand really ruined everybody with their individualism, fucking ideology, libertarian. Like, it's just you uh, and your family, no one else matters, bullshit. I think, too, like, is it so? I mean, yes, I guess, because we're in a patriarchy and that's just the way it always is. But it has to, and like you said, Bailey, people don't, if it doesn't affect you, it, until it affects you, you don't really care. So say, say it's a complete ban on all abortions. Obviously, it's going to affect women. That's what we're fighting for. But then the, it will dawn on the men that, oh, this is affecting us, too, because now uh, child support uh, now. Uh, oh, but this maybe. girl that I just yeah. maybe. But you know what I'm saying? It does affect mm-hmm. men also because you have children, you have baby mamas, you have whatever that. Yeah, it's more on it's it is. It should be about the woman. And that's what we're fighting for now. But what I'm saying is, say it gets banned because we are in a patriarchy. It's not looking good. And then men start to realize, oh, this is affecting us. Oh, this is, this is, is that what it takes? And then another decade goes by and then men are like, oh, and then everyone knows all these men, know other men who had to deal with this and she just had to have her baby. And I, and then they turn it around. Like what? (laughs) I don't think men will ever care. This is a hot take because I just Mm -hmm. have no faith in men. Um, But Mm. you would think that that would happen. And I think that that probably has happened in the past for some people. But I also think that because of the patriarchy and because of sexism in general, um, it is still very much uh, ingrained within a lot of these men that women are supposed to be the keepers of their chastity. And so basically, like, if they get pregnant, it's their fault. And yeah, for sure. And, um, the men don't, you know, it's not their fault that she got pregnant and she's just a hoe. Oh, I don't the think they'll they. take, I don't think they'll take responsibility for getting no, them pregnant. No. I just mean when it starts to hit their pocketbooks and their lives, their livelihood, their social life, they're like having to have children that they have to have now. Maybe. I feel like they could also use it as a fucking status symbol, like Nick Cannon. <laughs> like, oh, God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just like collecting babies um, and baby mamas. Oh I don't know. <laughs> but like I, Nick Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, um, or like future. Um, but like, I I kind of think, because this happened in Poland. I don't know if you know about the, this one woman in Poland. This happened in the 70s when, the, when this is when abortion was illegal. And this woman, I believe it was an ectopic pregnancy. And um, she... Uh, was told that she had an ectopic pregnancy and she wanted this baby that she was in her third trimester. Um, and she was told that not only will the baby not survive, but she was at risk, but no one could perform. No one could terminate this pregnancy. No one could do it. She ended up dying, her wow. and the baby, of, of septic shock. Um, and then abortion was overturned in, in Poland. So I'm wondering if, what if I feel like it could come down to that, where it's going to be a middle-class, beautiful white woman that dies of septic shock. And that would trigger it with status and someone who everybody knows it's going to have to be a celebrity or some shit. I don't even know if it has to be a celebrity. It's going to have to be like the Elizabeth smart of like, Mm, you know mm, what I mean? mm -hmm. Like kidnapping. Yeah. yeah, 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 Of course. uh, Cause it's going to be tons of women of color that will be, have died over and over mm-hmm. and over again of septic chart or whatever because they couldn't terminate their pregnancy it's going to take maybe like that one white woman of of like st- class and status mm-hmm. i don't know yeah yeah <laughs> i don't and you know that's um okay so the way that you're talking right now is reminding me of like when people are like when the aclu when you know any movement is basically choosing who their figurehead is going to be like when they're like this is the person mm-hmm. that is face of this movement. I don't know that that will happen specifically because middle-class white women are not going to have that. It's not going to be that hard for her mm. to get an abortion. True. Um, yeah, that is true. But I do think, unfortunately, that the people that we're going to, you know, the person that we might see that becomes the face of this is unfortunately going to be someone who is young. Maybe they have Um, maybe it's a girl who is in middle or high school. Maybe she has been affected by incest. Maybe Mm -hmm. she's been, um, maybe she's been raped Mm -hmm. by someone else. And then, you know, 
she's if she's not able to access an abortion i feel like that is going to end up in the news yeah and that's disgusting because no that but you're also right ruins that girl's life exactly a hundred percent i, I want to like bring up this because i mean we talked about a little a little bit about this before about how i mean at the end of the day this is just a, an extremely racist yeah uh situation that's happening um the situation is called america right right um so i want to quote this one woman do you know sister song um they're a great group but like uh, monica simpson she's an executive director of sister song she was caught uh she considers this to be racist that lawmakers want to ban abortion but not fix the systems that have oppressed and marginalized black families simpson said many black women are underpaid and living in communities without access to fresh food and health care facilities the u.s census data shows black women are paid 63 percent of what white men make on average and about 24 percent of the black community faced uh, food security in 2020 black americans are also more likely than white americans to suffer multi-general multi-generational poverty according to a brookings report and the report found that one in five black americans is living in poverty for the third generation in a row compared to one in 100 white americans so it's wow. just like when you think of all those statistics and what this actually means it, it kind of reminds me of like because there's a lot of you know um uh, protests that are have been happening and there's a lot of like white women that will put on the handmaid's tail garb uh-huh and a lot of women of color and people of color are calling that out because it's just like mm -hmm. fuck you for just seeing this now because of the handmaid's tail like when this has been happening to our communities for mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. like you don't mm -hmm. like you don't understand how um how this affects us so much more differently than you because and how hurtful it is that now you're just realizing yeah mm -hmm. um i don't know no, i mean <laughs> everything you've it. said is right on because mm -hmm. it i mean even if we know that this is going to like the statistics just go down the line right because they're like yeah we know this is going to affect people in poverty yeah who's in Who's in poverty? Right. Well, it's mostly people of color. So this is just because of that. I mean, right there, tell oh, yeah. you this is mostly going to affect people of color. We also, as I said before, there is, I don't know if it's the majority, but I think it is, um, of people who are seeking abortions, they have children. Right. They just can't afford to have another one. Right. So this idea that People just don't want their, you know, like they're making this sacrifice so that they can plan for their future and they can support the kids they the already children have. That they have. It, yeah. And I'll say it again, turn away study, the economic yeah. impacts of this. It also focuses on race. There's a large part of this that talks about how race plays into this. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing about that study that's super interesting is that, you know, at the beginning of reading part of it, I was like, how did these people actually, how do they know that these people started out on the same foot, right? Like right. maybe the people who didn't get the abortion, maybe they actually started out with like less resources and that's why they couldn't get there in time. But they actually did this study by comparing credit reports with women and following up each, like, I don't remember, I think it was each year, but looking yeah. into how their credit fared. And it was just, the numbers wow. show that economically this does not work no yeah. that's what i do i encourage I really, people again to check out the turnaway study because i hadn't heard of that until you told us and it's exact data that now if you listen to the political rhetoric you will be told we don't have mm -hmm. but we do yes. have this data and that's why it's ridiculous because you know economists who are commenting on these things they because somebody actually wrote in, I can't remember what they wrote, but they wrote something, an economist wrote something to the Supreme Court because they essentially were like, no, we do have that data. And she wasn't even talking about whether or not she wasn't like, I'm pro-choice. She wasn't like, I'm anti-choice. Yeah. You know, she didn't take a stance. She just was like, this is incorrect. We do have this data. So don't say that we don't because right. it's very clearly right there. Yeah. Um, but that just goes to show that they just are ignoring the data. Yeah, they don't care. It doesn't fit into yeah. the picture. Literally, no, no. one, no one cares. <laughs> and in conclusion, like, that no one cares. Comfortable, yeah. and so I'm gonna pretend it's not happening. 
Um, right. Let me just shut that out. A hundred percent. Well, I feel like we have to talk a little bit about um, trigger laws. Yes. Trigger bans, yeah. mm-hmm. I guess, because it's, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. basically, um, one of the reasons that a ruling would have really big immediate impacts are these trigger bans. And a trigger ban is an abortion ban in waiting, essentially. So it's basically if Roe is overturned in June, then we would, as of right now, as of today, there would probably be about 13 states within a month that ban abortion completely. Yeah. So that's great. Um, but yeah, but, but 22, means... 22 states that will ha- that will restrict it to a certain degree immediately. But like, yeah, the it's insane. Yeah. So basically what that means is that a bunch of these laws are just waiting in the wings because they're not legal right now. You know, mm-hmm. a really another really interesting thing is that some of there are some states that have laws that are pro or sorry, that are uh previous they're they're before roe v mm. wade so those laws have literally just been sitting there but no one ever got rid of them so now they're also having talks with people they're like oh well can we this technically never went away so can we just start enforcing it again oh. um the other big thing is they're talking about whether or not they can restrict travel which is like a whole nother Holy issue shit. in of itself because can you restrict people from traveling to other states? Like that's insane. No, yeah, that's, that's crazy. So insane. Yeah, that's, um, that's just stopo type yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. So that's something that is you know being talked about a lot because people in certain states are trying to be like, well, we don't. We want to make sure that nobody goes here and does this. And you know, like Oklahoma is looking to pass. Um, abortion an abortion ban and that is where a lot of the women from texas have been going to get their abortions so Mm -hmm. they've been calling like oklahoma like a abortion safe haven and um oklahoma doesn't like that they don't want to be known as that so now they're looking to have a ban which means that these women from texas are going to have to travel somewhere else um excuse me yeah it's so these trigger laws they remind me of um they they remind me of like the undue burden laws as well, where, you know, people were basically passing these restrictions about what an abortion clinic had to have. And it was like hospital admitting privileges. The grass has to be this tall. Oh, they just oh. like chip, chip, chip away until trap laws. There we go. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm, Sorry. Mm-hmm. I don't, I need more coffee, but yeah. um, <laughs> it's just, we have trigger bans. We have trap laws. We have all of these things happening and it's, really awful and i know that everyone is like what can i do so what you can do yeah. <laughs> once again and i know that we'll have another update after june yes um, and we'll know more we'll have to have you on again <laughs> mm-hmm. what we can do though is vote seriously vote and don't just vote for the president or the senator and then Local. not fill out the rest of your ballot yes because so many people do that yeah. Also, don't just read the voter's guide because what I will tell you about the voter's guide, at least in Washington state, I'm assuming it's the same in California, but um, people write their own statement. Like I have written mm. many voter's guide statements for candidates. Do you think that I'm going to be like, mm. oh, my candidate really sucks on this? Like, no, yeah, I'm yeah. not. I'm absolutely not going to do that because I wrote it for them or they wrote it themselves. Mm-hmm. Um so when you're reading the voter's guide, what you're reading is you're reading a statement that they made about themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so of course it's going to sound good. You need to go onto websites like for Washington state, the progressive voters guide. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that they might have other states on there too, but that's one where I can always find out how people feel on specific issues because mm-hmm. all of these candidates have had interviews and have filled out questionnaires. So I can actually look at these specific issues. Um, Lots of reproductive rights organizations also interview candidates and then give them a grade based on how they've, especially um, incumbents, they Uh. will tell you how they voted in the legislature. So 
they'll basically be like, this person said they were really pro-choice and then they voted with their caucus and decide, and they voted against a bunch of, um, you know, great bills that would have been wonderful for women's health care. So then we can see that really they're just blowing smoke up our ass. Like they're not, yeah. they're not voting that way. So they're going to get an F yeah, on yeah, reproductive yeah. health. Um, and a lot of times they go by issue, which is great because, you know, even some Democrats are like anti um, parental yep. notification. And it's good to know that. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they change their mind during the interview process. So like once they have a, <laughs> a reproductive health advocate in front of them who is explaining to them why parental notification actually can't happen, because in their mind, they're like, but I love my child and I would want of to know course. if they're having a health procedure. And it's like, well, not every parent is like you. Mm -hmm. Different conversations. You need to remember again. that. Yes. Um, so that's the first thing is you can figure out how all of these candidates feel about issues. There are lots of different sites that will show you how people voted or even just questionnaires that they've filled out slash their campaign team has filled out. Usually it's somebody like me that's filling them out. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, once again, volunteer for an abortion access fund. Yes. Because there's an uptick in a, already. We've already yeah. got like I'm um, I'm signed up, though I haven't been doing it lately, but my friend Natalia is doing it right now. And she has had multiple times where people will be like, oh, my gosh, last minute thing. We need somebody to go pick someone up and drive mm -hmm. them to their abortion tomorrow. Yeah. And she can do that. Like, that's a great that's an yeah. actual thing that she can go physically do. And yeah. if you have some extra time on your hands, then yeah. and I would say that that is something that you should, you know, sign up to do. Um, if you have an extra room, you can house mm -hmm. people. So you don't have to drive them. You know, somebody else can drive them around and then they can just stay in your house. Mm -hmm. um, though you might have to go pick up medication at the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other part of that is if you don't have time at all, just give money, throw yeah. money at those organizations because those are the ones that are going to be helping people right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, we have we're going to be shouting out the National Network of Abortion Funds. Um, yeah, at the end of this episode. So uh, yes, guys, please stay tuned for that information. I mean, ugh, thank you so much, Bailey, for yeah. everything. I mean, uh, we could literally talk about this all day. Well, until I want to blow my brains out, but um, we got to have you back on so we can get uh, an update on this once there is one and then pick your brain because we're into it yeah thank you so much for continuing to come on and you yeah. really like you shed so much light on things you explain a lot to us and our listeners and i'm really grateful for your time yeah oh thank you thank well you. i'm really glad that it's helpful because sometimes i feel like i'm just like talking at people so i <laughs> hope yeah. that this no. is helpful and explaining things yes 100 percent. very much thank you very much thank you thank you we love you we'll see you again soon i know love you guys oh thank you so much oh again bailey for being here and talking with us i hope no one loses faith like we still want to have like yeah like hope at the end of the tunnel a light at the end of the tunnel if you will um, right with everything so and you know like, i her being so willing to come on frequently is this our, her third time on, but also like being so deeply and consistently informed and then having the, she's just very eloquent. She's able to communicate it to in a way that is understandable and yeah. actionable. She gives us these action steps and I'm really grateful to Bailey and you guys like, please give us feedback on the episode. If you have any questions, she always says you can reach out to her DM or us and we can reach out to her for you. But um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure this is going to be another part episode once the decisions are made and the more opinions are done in uh, July. Yeah. So stay tuned. Hmm. But um, until then, uh, do your research on like really good uh, um, local funds that you can donate time, money to whatever you can. Planned Parenthood is a great one. But another one is the National Network of Abortion Funds. They build power with members to remove financial and logistical barriers to abortion access by centering people who have, who have abortions and organizing at the intersections of racial, economic and reproductive justice. Member organizations work across their network to remove financial and logistical barriers to abortion access. Some of them work 
to clinics to help pay for your abortion. Some of them offer support such as transportation, child care, translation, doula services, and somewhere to stay if you have to travel to get your abortion. To learn more and donate, please visit abortionfunds.org. And a lot of that is going to be very important. Um, transportation, places to stay, yeah. like, that is so important. That's I've huge. been thinking about getting involved with that because mm-hmm. it's like but whatever I can do to um, mm-hmm. help people is a goal yeah and um it's rough times yeah. but uh you know women make up we what over 50 percent of this country so yeah. if we just keep supporting one another and yes. obviously the men too we'll be okay we'll, we'll, we'll be figure okay. it we're gonna figure it out um but we love you guys yes uh, please follow us oh. on instagram and twitter yeah yeah no i was gonna say that oh. <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, uh, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. Please rate and review. It really helps us reach more people in the algorithm. Um, And uh, Patreon, $3 a month, $7 a month, $11 a month. Also really, really helps us out. And I'm Molly Cottrell. I'm Melissa Rosano. Here's to turning huge meltdowns into a little bit of magic, hopefully. Maybe. Maybe.